everybody. Welcome to this very special video we're putting out. I am Ryan Murray, volunteer for the Titler for Mayor campaign, and I'm here with uh, the man himself, Bruce Titler. How are you? I'm good. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks for doing this. Um, we got five questions, um, frequently asked questions from the folks. Uh, so I'm going to drop those in and then uh, we'll hear some responses. The first question is for some people who don't know you, um, how would you describe yourself and uh, give us a vision of... Um, how you got into this process, I guess. Okay, well, I've, I've spent uh, all of my professional career, about 37 years in public education. Um, I taught out in Houston, Texas, and then we came back to New York in 1985. We chose to live in Cortland when we came back here. Uh, we've lived in this house since 1986. So what is that, 35 years we've been uh, a resident here on Stevenson Street. I uh, taught social studies for many years. I taught in Dryder. I spent 20 years in, in Homer. And then I finished up my career, my last nine years of my career as a high school principal down in Whitney Point. And uh, through the years, I've been involved in the community in a variety of ways. Uh, I was served in city council uh, about 20 years ago. I was mayor um, in 2000, 2001. And then after I retired, I decided to uh, get back involved. I wasn't happy with some of the decisions being made. And I didn't want to be that guy. I just sat around and complained. So I tossed my hat in the ring and here we are. All right. Um, there seems to be a lot of misconceptions about the uh, comp controllers report um, going around yeah. out there. So um, I thought this would be a good opportunity for you to clear up some of the confusion on this topic. Sure. The, the comp controllers report had two portions. The first portion dealt with the fact that the city of Cortland did not have a adequate uh, credit card policy in place. Um, we have addressed that and we now do have an adequate, uh, more than adequate, a very clear credit card policy in place. The second portion of the, of the report dealt with uh, the city did not have a clear policy procedures in place for vacation time being paid out, uh, comp time, et cetera. Uh, we do now have, uh, we are now addressing, have we have addressed those issues. And um, just for the record, those issues took place in 2018, 2019, and I didn't come on board the city council as a member until 2020. But we addressed those issues. They just happened in 2018 and 2019 before right. I was on a city council. Uh, on that same topic, there's been a lot of questions about the fiscal stability of the city. And I know you got um, some insight into that, that people can um, take from that. So why don't you go into that? Yeah, yeah, the city is in, is in a very good uh, uh, fiscal shape. Standard & Poor's gives us an A-plus bond rating. We get market and sometimes below market rates when we do bond. Um, and the Comptroller's Office has said that uh, we are currently not susceptible to fiscal stress. So uh, the truth is the city is in good financial shape. And I'm glad I had a chance to address that briefly. Thank you. I know transparency is important to you, and I know you wanted to address this topic. So why don't you talk a little bit about what the um, council has been doing and what you plan to do going forward as far as transparency goes? Well, what the council does right now, we're, we're a very, very transparent local government. All of our agendas are on our website. Um, the minutes are posted on the website. All of our meetings have, since I've uh, been on a city council a second time since January 2020, all of our meetings have been um, live streamed. Uh, unfortunately, we've had to go for the last, I don't know, 18 months, it seems. Uh, we've had to do a lot of meetings by Zoom, um, so we haven't been able to meet in public and the city hall as much, but the meetings are still all open to the public. People can log in, they can see and hear everything we're doing. Uh, we're as transparent as transparent as, as you can possibly be. We're as transparent as you can be. And, and I would continue doing that, of course, uh, mm -hmm. when I'm elected mayor, we would continue to live stream the meetings and post the agenda on the website, post the minutes on there. So that's, we're, we're open. People can come and they can make comments. They can make comments before the meeting, after the meeting. It's, it's a very inclusive, inviting, transparent process. Okay. Um, and then the final question is, uh, the vision going forward. What's your vision uh, for the future, for the future of Cortland? Yes. Well, thanks for asking this, because this is really what I want to talk about. This is why I ran, uh, why I'm running for mayor, why I ran for city council, and, and why I want to run for mayor, why I want to be the next mayor. We have a lot of 
positive energy uh, happening right now in the city. A lot of good things moving forward. We have some infrastructure projects. Uh, we have the, the one on downtown uh, Main Street. Next year in 2023, we're going to be completely rehabbing Groton from Main Street to probably about Outer Creek. And then we're looking at getting the financing so we can have a complete redo of a Homer Ave from Madison Street and then meet Homer somewhere as an up on that line. When I say a complete rehab, we're talking about water, new water pipes, stormwater, sewage, uh, curbing, sidewalks, lights, you know, the whole, the whole works. And then this year, we've spent $1.7 million on, on street paving. I know people are getting frustrated because the streets are, are dug up and it seems like you can't, you know, take a right-hand turn without running into a, um, a street that's, that's not, you know, is, is under construction. And I, and I get that, it is frustrating. But Owego Street, Delaware, Groton, Elm, Clinton to the railroad tracks, those are all the plan is for all those to be buttoned up um, this construction season so that um, those roads will be fixed and they'll be in great shape uh, for years to come. So um, folks, I understand your frustrations. I get frustrated too, um, but that's, you know, but that's a good sign. Construction, road construction is a good sign. The city, it, so a very wise man once told me a community is either living or dying. And I think all that construction shows we're living, we're moving forward. And I want to keep that energy moving forward. Um, I, I also want to, uh, support economic development. I'd like to see if, you know, if we can't maybe spend some more of our energies and resources then try and recruit some businesses owned by uh, people that have been historically underrepresented in our community. I think there might be some opportunities there. I, I want to, I, we need to pay more attention to the neighborhoods. I want to make sure that we have safe, vibrant neighborhoods and that we're enforcing the zoning and the, and the codes. And I want to make sure we have equity for everyone. Everybody in our community should feel welcome, they should feel respected, they should feel wanted, and, and I want us to be that community. So um, I, I'm looking forward to moving Cortland to be the best version of itself it can possibly be, and that's why I'm running for mayor. So thanks for this uh, opportunity to, to uh, um, talk to the people out there, Ryan. I really appreciate yeah. it. And uh, you know, if anybody needs to reach me, you can always call at my, me at my home phone, 753-7338. Or you could leave a message on Tightler for Mayor on my Facebook page, Tightler for Mayor, and I'll respond as quickly as I can. So thank you. All right. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody, and we'll see you soon.